What's up guys, this is Coach Donnie from Elevate Yourself. In this video, I'll be reacting to the NCAA Women's Volleyball 2023 Championship match between Texas and Nebraska. I know it's almost been a month since that match happened, so this video is long overdue. If you're new to this channel, I'm a volleyball coach, volleyball player, and sports performance trainer who provides educational, inspirational, and entertaining volleyball content. And let's get into the action. And look at this hype. Tampa Bay and Nebraska has been a long time powerhouse. They always find a way to make it into the final four no matter who they have. Ooh, good double block. Great coverage from Texas. Out of system swing, lots to analyze here. First, let's start off with the great serving routine here. And this is something that I teach a lot of my players, whether they're collegiate, high school, or high level adults. Always make sure you take a breath. You see how she exhales before she serves. Breathe out the anxiety, focus your mind. Breathing is one of the best ways to focus on the task at hand. So good coverage here. And one thing I love about this player is no approach. She just does an in place two step standing jump and still goes for a swing. Blocker is late on the seal. And if you can jump and take a swing, I always recommend that no matter where you're at. Oh, was that a sharp angle kill? Who is this woman here? Now this one is actually on the five foot line, sharp angle crush. Look at that, right on the 10 foot line. And one thing she does really good job of is here. She stays open to the court. And you see how her waist is facing the setter. And contrary to popular belief, you don't need to rotate every time you swing. A lot of your power comes from the backswing. And as long as you're open to the court, if you want to hit that sharp angle, you just stay open to the sideline and swing to the right of your body. You see that? Beautiful. Tough angle, one point pass, and a huge cut from this outside hitter here. And Sarah does a good job getting her feet set first. And see the middle from Texas is cheating to the right. She knows it's going to be coming to the outside. So it's okay to get a head start if you're reading the situation correctly. And a big right left two step close. Broad jumping. Now this is where rotation does help not only bring direction. See how she's hitting a little deeper, but also a little bit more torque, a little bit more heaviness behind the swing. And if you can get a kill off of the libero, that's like a bonus point here. Now the libero does a good job keeping the ball on the inside of her body, but it just catches her a little bit high, which is why it shanks behind her. Great angle of the pass there. Another out of system play. They're forcing into an Alsa hitter game. A little bit inside with the hammer. Who is this Alsa hitter number 13? So one thing that's interesting about Texas is when they're out of system, which means the pass is either off the net or too far left or right, and you can only set one hitter. They tend to set their out of system players a little bit inside, so they hang it inside. And that's something that Nebraska should be starting to track, meaning they should take majority of the angle away because look at all this momentum coming into the court here. So your goal as a blocker is to take away the hitter's strongest hit, which is their angle. So by the time she hits, you see how she's already passed the right front blocker. So this is way too much space for the defenders to defend against. So the right front blocker should be moved in slightly more to force the hitter to kind of chop down the line or at least turn it, which is a much more difficult swing. But instead, they give this outside hitter a huge cut at the ball. Look at this. So posting too wide and then just gets a free swing. See how she opens up, elbow back, left arm up. Man, great job with this hitting technique. And she hits on the inside of the ball and doesn't even need to rotate because she's going to hit that sharp angle. Ooh, running big with a tip kill in area four. This is one of the best places to tip. When you're running a big, which is a back row quick, this girl with the ponytail actually looks like <laughs> everyone's got a ponytail. Uh, but she's going to run in for the big, which is a back row quick. Great setting choice from Texas. Now, they're doing a bunch block here from Nebraska, which means they're all very close to each other. And when you do a bunch block, you actually take away the center of the court, which is what you want to do. You want your hitters to hit towards the sideline, which is riskier because you could hit it out. Akana, 
So great read there. You see, we almost have like a triple block. Yeah, it's a tr it's a double or triple block there, and her elbow straight. So the libero should be able to identify the elbow early. The moment the elbow straight, you know they're gonna tip. So this libero should have released earlier. But if you wait to see what the hitter's going to do, you're always going to be late. You always want to try to read what they're going to do and get set up before they contact the ball. Because now that's too long of a distance there. But great spot. Whenever you're hitting a big area four, which is left front, is a very good spot to try to tip to. And here's another great view. See a double block here. And short area four. And a lot of power tips here. Not a lot of good connections with the quick sets for both teams. Wow, look at that sprawl. So this is probably a DS coming in to serve for the middle. Look at that. She, her feet are stopped before contact so she can change direction. And that first step, that first step is so critical if you're a defender or if you're a hitter, but especially on defense. So see how her first step is to the ball versus back. Boom. So it's to the ball. And she's able to sprawl out. Great layout here and good effort from Nebraska. Earning a free ball from Texas. A little bit low, rushing the middle, forcing a misconnection. You see that? So here, great posture, good passing platform. Just a little bit more arm movement to get the free ball higher. Because now the middle's rushed. She couldn't jump as high. And also the middle's late as a result of that. So the setter still tries to force middle. Funky play there. So that's a much higher pass, but very well handled by Texas. Man, lots of misconnections. Maybe some fatigue starting to settle in. Another tip. This was just a tip city here. And great tipping technique from the outside hitter here. See how her elbow's all the way back. And this is where number 27 does a good job selling the tip. Also, great transition footwork. Let's see here. She digs that tip. So part of the off blocker, which is the left front blocker's job, is you come off the net. Dig the sharp angle and be ready for the tip here. So that's what she does. Digs the tip and open your body to your loading zone. So here she opens up her left foot and then comes in the circle. See how she opens left foot, cross step, and then starts her approach. And then elbow back. Now because her elbow's back, people think she's going to hit hard and then she tips at the last second. So that's why people aren't ready. That's a very well executed tip. Look at that elbow spiking position. You don't know whether she's tipping or hitting. And then Statue of Liberty at the end. Boom. Look how high she's getting, but just above the fingertips. And that sucks when you're clawing at the ball as a blocker. You just want to get it so badly. Targeting number 13 again. Not the best pass, but good enough to set two hitters, forcing the outside hit. Now this set was a little bit behind her, so that's why she's forced to take off a lot of power. And this ball is in front of her. Look at that smash from number 27. So you can see the quality of the set here. And not to say that the setters are good or bad because one of the hardest jobs on the court, but location. So see how the location is on the seven foot line. So it's on top and slightly yeah, it's behind the hitter. And so we always tell our setters to set the location, don't set the hitter. And I'm pretty sure the Texas setter knows that. But, you know, you can't have perfect sets all the time. I mean, she's a great setter. So you see how it, she loses a lot of power. And the difference here, you see how she's setting on the four-foot line, keeping it in front of her hitter, and is able to crush it. Look at that crush. And this is great out-of-system hitting here. Keeps it in front, turns it down the line. That's a laser ace. Wow, you rarely see clean aces like this against two great teams, especially Nebraska. So they're targeting this outside hitter here, and it just gets in front of her. A little bit of a seam there, so it drops. Man, what a tough serve. Great view on that serve. Look at that. Very little spin right on the corner, and serving corners is risky because it's very close to the baseline and the sideline, higher chance of serving out. But when you do hit it in, you create the longest distance, especially from area five to the setter. That is the longest distance a passer can pass and gets her a little bit low, forcing the bump set into down ball, free ball situation. And another out of system situation, man, lots of out of system plays. Inside set, boom, over the top. Holy cow, number six, 
I think that's their opposite over the top of a big Nebraska block. Two step close. Look at that. That is what we call OT over the top. And this middle back defender is actually in the right spot. So if a block sets up well, which is what Nebraska does, I mean, this is not a small block. Look at, she's probably like 6'3", her head's above the net. And so when you're taking away this soft line area, which is area one and the one five seam or the one six seam, the middle back's job is to dig around the block. So that's why she's here. And very rarely can people hit over blocks at this level, but man, this opposite from Texas can. So she's kind of just hitting where nobody's at. Well-timed. I mean, this block is almost at the top of the antenna, which means she might be above the top of the antenna. Clean OT here. Look at this replay. High swing, a little bit of snap to get it down. Great play. Ooh, that was an interesting play here. So the setter is running forward, and then I'm sure the middle changes are call, calls back, and then beats the block just with good communication. Because in this play, she's probably running, let's see, based on the path. Yeah, she's probably going to run a three, but because the setter is in the three zone already, or a shoot set, she has to stay in front. But if she calls a front, then she's going to be in the outside hitter zone and take her space. So this is something that they practice and the chemistry as well to make in-game changes. Running forward, runs the back one, same timing, beats the block. Man, they are just serving this team off the court. Look at this dropper in between two players, miscommunication and lots of hesitation there. And a little frustration starting to develop from Nebraska. Ooh, man, you can see the ball sign. Let's see that again. I love the slow motion here. Great mid-palm contact, flat trajectory, very minimal spin. And we talked about the best place to serve is in between two players so you can cause miscommunication. You see how no one's making a move there. No one's saying anything. They should determine who's getting that ball before it drops. And that's called calling your seams before the serve. And great still platform, perfect pass. And a back row quick slammed on the 20 foot line. So this is the same person that runs that big attack. We have the middle running a slide and the outside running all the way to the left there. Great tempo. And the reason why she had a free swing is because this middle has to watch this middle. So you see how this middle starts to follow this middle on the slide you see that and then now she has to dive back in and she's late to the set and this player is watching that hitter and this player has to block the middle so now you have almost no blockers up that's a crush that is a slam i mean this i wonder how high number six jumps i mean this is monster hops look at that clean straight down most people can't hit that downward on a front row set. And Nebraska with their own big right back at the throat here. Great passing technique here from the libero. We talk about feet. So you see how her hands are apart and her feet are moving. So feet first and then platform so she can stay behind the ball. Great pass right on the money. And coming in from that back real quick, we have a slide coming around here. We have an outside hitter coming around the front. And once again, overloading this middle zone because now these people have to watch the middle. And once they get distracted from the middle, Team USA. one and a half blocks right on the money. Nice high pass. We talked about follow through with your platform. Good coverage from Texas. Inside set and Nebraska once again not posting inside enough to take away that angle hammer. So let's see where this Nebraska block is set up. You see how she's already broad jumping forward and this is still, they need to bring the block. See where she's landing? She's landing almost at the middle blocker so they need to bring this in to take away. And this libero, poor left back defender, has to cover way too much court 
against a huge angle swing here. So you want to shrink the court by bringing the block in so that she only has to dig a smaller space, but because the block is set up too wide, now it exposes pretty much half the court, and that's way too much room for even just two people to cover here. Look at that. Not even touching the ball. The barrel did the best she could. Great high pass. Ooh, the, the pineapple. Popularized by Loy Ball. Loy Ball would be proud. Let's look at this dump. A little bit tight. She goes up with a straight elbow, and most people would either dump it short or a sharp angle, so that's where this person is in. So that's why you have people creeping up. Now, this deep dump is actually only middle back's responsibility because these two people have to cover a shorter distance because the ball will fall faster. So you need more people to cover the 10 foot line. And also most setters tend to dump downward. Now, when you have a high dump like that, you have more time. So this middle back, you see how she stepped forward instead of covering laterally. If you're playing middle back defense, most of your movements are gonna be left to right and not forward and back here. See how she steps forward and has to chase the ball back. And the libero should be fully committing. So this libero here hesitates and should be fully committing to the short one to open up communication and to communicate to the middle back that you need to cover my deep. But I think this middle back also hesitates because this libero kind of goes for it. So you, you can't play two balls at once. You need to fully commit to one and trust your teammates to get to the other one. Lots of out of system plays again and force the tip. I think that was a double. Tip, cover. Wow, that was a huge missed double call. So someone touches off the block, that's fine. You could touch it again, but now this player digs the first one. Now the first one can be a double, meaning you can kind of do something weird like that. I'm surprised they didn't call a lift, but maybe you can argue that it was a double. But then she passes it again right away. But credit to Texas for still playing through that missed call. Good soft block, a little bit tight to the net, but it doesn't matter when you got that heat. Ooh, great dig from that libero. So the libero does a good job staying wide and not cheating in. And she's perfectly lined with the hitter there. Ooh, doing a little limbo on the court. She is fearless. Another scramble play from Nebraska. Whoa, okay, the ball's not down. Wow, this is an incredible rally. Two-hand dump, and this is where we talked about why the right front defend, right, right back defender has to be close to the 10-foot line so that you can react to these shorter distant dumps. Now, the libero is kind of out of position. She should be here, so this should be an easy ball by the libero, but I think she's a little too into the action here. So see how no one's reading it? The setter does a good job disguising it. And she just happens to be in the good position and is able to react. Another scramble play, and who's going to get it? Number 27. Good sprawl from the right back. A little tight on that one. Oh my gosh, that was a hammer. Who are these hitters? By the way, this libero knows how to bump set. Majority of the time when she bump sets, I feel like it's a 70% kill efficiency. A little inside on the net. Open to the setter, bam, on the 10 foot line. Oh no, who netted? I appreciate that Texas just played through that missed double call. Yeah, I don't see any net on that one. Let's see, on the finger. Jersey, but I think the ball was down. I'm pretty sure the ball was down because hair doesn't count. But they did a replay, so looks like she did touch the net before the ball was down. Free ball pass, easily handled. Oh, with the roof. I wonder if this was a dive block or if this was a straight over block. But to stop number 27, one blocker up. This is a great set, by the way. Number five pulls the Texas middle. Oh, it's a dive block. So this is where showing line and taking the angle really pays off. See how number 15 is posted a little bit, takes a step, and I think this hitter knows that. She's taking a step toward the line, and number 27 is like, ooh, I'm gonna hammer in the angle. But instead, number 15 sees 
her whole body facing the angle and dives inward for the shutdown. Look at that. Oh, and the hands are so still. Great blocking technique. No way to cover that one. They are just serving lights out, and Nebraska is just struggling. But on this play, though, when you serve this tough and you force a team to just take an easy swing, you, you gotta build you don't want to reward an out of system play with another out of system play. They gotta find a way to pass that ball better, either pass a three back or call it earlier or put up a block or something to force them to, to put an easier ball over because we don't want to go out of system there. But it doesn't matter when you're just hitting straight over the block. Man, this this one is on another level here. Number six. Triple block. Clean over the block. I mean, you can't even defend that. Let's see how high she gets. What the heck? Her whole chest is above the net, and she's probably like 6'4". And this is great blocking technique. You see how all the hands are still and pressed over. But she is a whole forearm over the block. And it has top spin. It's not like a spatchy one. No one's defending that one. I hope this woman plays on the national team someday. That's some OT heat. And of course, finishing with an ace from Texas. I mean, they are serving lasers. If you want to watch the extended, uncut version of my reaction to this video, then join our channel memberships, where you'll also receive exclusive perks like early access to all my volleyball games, vlogs, and other special volleyball videos, and enjoy our custom emojis and loyalty badges, behind the scenes content, and live stream Q&A sessions where you get to ask me as many questions as you want. Sign up below and join our members only community of volleyball junkies. All right, players with headbands usually are pretty deadly. Oh, serving outside of a body with a clean ace. And Nebraska bringing their own heat, forcing out of system. I love this decisiveness. Even if the setter doesn't call help, if you're going to take it, just call it early and take it. Good two-step. Triple block. I'm impressed with the blocking scheme. Let's see if they can shut her down. Ho, ho, ho. That is a shutdown right there. In, that's a beautiful triple swing block there. Look at this. So they're all kind of bunched. They do a bunch blocking system, which means all the blockers are closer together in the middle to help with any middle sets, like ones, back ones, shoot sets. But the, the disadvantage is you're crowding more space in the middle, which means you really have to be in sync when you're blocking the high balls, which is the left side and the right side. And here they are very in sync. And remember how we talked about out of system, you got to move the block inside, force them to turn down the line, which is a harder hit to, to go for. But more importantly, you don't leave this huge gap in the angle. Everyone's heads above the net, pressed over, boom. So great job posting a little more inside, finally to shut down that out of system angle swing. Man, how does that ball fall down? Let's see where the miscommunication broke down. It's a good free ball situation. A little bit low on the big set and to the left. We have three people coming in for the tip. So this person here is responsible. If right front blocker is helping, then the right back player is responsible for coming in for that short tip there. Oh no, it's the left front blocker. So if she's not going to participate in the block, she needs to come off and help cover some tips. If she's blocking, then it's going to be left or right back. That is one benefit of running a faster tempo offense as you force people to be more reactive and don't give people a lot of time to read and think about the situation. Dang, that was a really good set from that one arm stab. Look at this. Boom. She's just trying to bump set that. little tight covers herself though this area one or area two tip has been the bane of nebraska here but i think it goes back to a lot of reacting to the situation because she's showing this tip first of all there's no approach 
And when someone doesn't have an approach, they're rarely going to hit that hard and mostly going to try to place it because they don't have any momentum to jump high enough and to hit hard enough. See how her elbow's straight, but she's still um, waiting there down the line to see what's going to happen. And there's no way you can cover 10 to 15 feet in that amount of time. So the moment you see the Statue of Liberty where the elbow's completely straight for the tip or maybe low elbow for the roll shot, she needs to release and cover the 10-foot line. And this person, if it is a high roll shot, then the middle back will cover this one. But you see how she's just waiting. You just can't react to those. You have to read those much better. So you see in the slow motion play how early she shows it. Her elbow's already forward. So the blocks did their job to just have to read that play better. Wow, serving outside the body. So Texas has not only been serving seams, but they've been lasers down the sideline. I mean, this sideline seam is also a really, really tough serve to pass. And the fact that Texas is able to do it consistently is really impressive. Another A serve. Wow, they are serving Nebraska off the court. Now, even though it's a one point game, it feels like Texas is in complete control. Let's look at this path of the serve here. So the passer does a good job of her shoulders for She's moving with her feet and then it probably rises like a good flow surf and then drops at the bottom and she kind of pops it. So that's why it's really important that you want every movement try to fall through upwards. So even if you can't get a good pass, it's still going to be high in the middle. And if you're not going to get a good pass, make it playable for your setter at least. So I think they're in their heads by now. I mean, they've been serving tough all game. Wow, another A serve. Holy crap. This one probably just drops. Number 27 is trying to be active with their feet. She moves back. And then it drops forward and just gets her. Now she does a good job keeping her knees forward. But just drops too low for the ball to go upward. Is she going to get another ace? Almost does. Ho, 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 ho. And she can dig as a middle. Wow, running that big. That's a confident set there. So pretty good swing from Nebraska. Good dig from the middle. And no matter where the setter is, looks like they've run this all day in practice. Back real quick. And a crush to run a big in that scramble play. That's how you know you got a good connection and an aggressive hitter. Number six is really impressive. So the setter, the middle does a good job flowing to the right because that's where the flow of the game is going. If she runs a back set, you have a lot more time. But instead, she takes advantage of this little gap here, tricking the middle blocker, making her late. See how the middle blocker goes one direction and then doesn't have enough energy to dive back. Great setting choice and a great hitting vision from number six. Oh, is that a stuff block from Texas? I just hear sound and I just see a ball hit the floor. <laughs> Holy cow. This is a great pass here. Trying to run some middle, and Texas is not fooled at all. The middle goes right away. Jeez, that is a roof. So the le because they run a faster offense with Nebraska, the left and right front blockers actually have to pre-turn their body just so they can get a head start on the swing block. So that's why you see the, the post blockers or the right and left front blocker kind of turn a little bit to get a head start. Because they know there's no middle back. I mean, they might run a bick here, but at least you have more time to recover. You want to stop the front row hitters first. So she's already a two-step. Hands over. Wow. So she tries to get into the seam, and that right hand just clamps down on that block. And when the ball lands before you do, that's how you know you got a big stuff block. Free ball opportunity from Texas. Can they take advantage? A bick. Running Bix on an in-system play. Was that from the middle or number six again? Oh, yeah, that's from number six. I was set her all day. Wow. So this goes to prove my point that you actually don't need to rotate to generate power. You do need to be open. I don't have time to explain the kinetic chain of why you're able to generate power without hurting your shoulder when you don't rotate. But as long as you're open and your arm is loose, your power should come from the backswing of your approach. So let's analyze number six here. See how her arms go all the way back. She's open to the setter and she's able to swing so hard and she swings all the way through. 
Power also comes from arm speed. You want to keep your arm really loose and swing as fast as you can. And when you can finish your arm swing before you land, that's how you know you got a fast arm swing. Boom, no rotation. Just gets on it, swings through, stays open. And here's a great example of that technique. Big back swing into open to the center, elbow back, no rotation, swing through, landing on both feet. Excellent technique. Open to the center and just whips through the ball there. Whoa, I'm just blown away at how many aces that are happening in this game. Let's see what's happening with the serve. I mean, she does the right job by trying to fall through. Knees are a little further back, so her weight's behind her. So she's kind of falling away as she's passing, which is not the best position to be in. You either want to fall to the side or fall forward, but if you're falling back, you see how she's falling back. And she's trying to finish with her platform, so she has the right idea. But if she bends her left knee forward, she can kind of fall to the side or forward. And that's what's going to make the ball go more center and upward. But because she's falling back, She's losing momentum and balance, and the ball just hits your platform in a funny way. Oh man, when you're acing the libero, that's how you know it's a tough serve. This must have been a riser. So libero, quick shuffle step. Yeah, I think this ball rose on her because her platform set down here, and then it all of a sudden it keeps going. And that's happened to me plenty of times when you feel like the ball is going to be down here, but it keeps going deeper and deeper. Catches her high. She's unable to get to the ball before the ball gets to her. Another tough reaction play. And Texas, man, whatever they're doing in the serving practice, we got to start doing that. Here's a great view to see what's going on with the serve. So, yeah, veering a little bit to her right. Game point, Texas. Can they close out the set? They got a big, big lead there. Let's take a look at that passing technique. So you see how her knee is forward, so she's able to move side or front. See that both knees are kind of forward. And so when she moves, she's either moving to the side or forward, not backwards. So it turns like a one-point pass into a two-point pass. Great sprawl from this left back defender here. Oh, good split step. So she hops in place before the set to kind of give her some extra momentum. Boom. And then she's ready to go forward under the ball. Good flipper. Forcing the ball out, and Texas takes that second set with amazing serving. Are you looking to buy some new volleyball gear? Then I highly recommend shopping at All Volleyball, where you can buy everything volleyball related from balls, shorts, training equipment, coaching equipment, and much more. They also have the widest and latest selection of volleyball shoes, customizable team jerseys, and amazing customer service. Use my discount code and link below to get 10% off your entire purchase and all orders over $100 receive free shipping. So get your volleyball gear today. There's Lexi Rodriguez stepping in. Crossbody swing, great up from Texas. Is that the setter? Yes, it is. Setter's playing defense. Uh, when everyone's dug in for the hard hit, then people aren't going to be ready for the tip because they're just expecting to be blown up. So now I feel bad for Nebraska. Nebraska is historically a great team, and this year they're still an amazing team. First of all, to just be in the finals, you got to be, I mean, these are the two best teams in the country, but I feel for them. No one is really attacking the serve. When you're in serve receive, you want to attack the ball, not like spike it or swing at it, but you want to have this aggressive mindset. I'm going to get the ball. And here, there's a lot of waiting, waiting, and then people just reacting to it. So mentally, they've kind of taken themselves out of that serve-receive game. If you're going to lose the serve-receive game, probably going to lose the game. See how they're kind of reacting and no one's really talking. Oh, high swing off the block. Not only can she hit over the top, she can hit high hands. And that's a smart swing. That's an international swing. She might be ready for the national team. Look at this high flat, boom. Oh, high flat on the line. You can't do anything about that one. Aiming for the fingers, going cross body. This is a good block setup, but sometimes the hit is just better. That's a really smart swing here. 
So people are used to having to go over the top and going high deep corner is a very high percentage shot. This is a very smart swing. That's what you need to do to succeed at the international level. And for her to have over the top, straight down, tool and deep corner, that's very impressive. I am so impressed with number six here. And once again, to prove my point, when you're hitting angle, you don't need to rotate. Stay open, swing fast, and the ball is going to stay in the angle. And it's going to be pretty hard. That's a better pass from Nebraska. Hopefully they can get some type of rhythm. A little tight on the set. Oh, the pass is off there. A little tough on the set. And they finally stop number six. That is a rare occasion here. And you cannot count Nebraska out of the game. They are still fighting. Good swing block. This is great technique. Good space between the two. Hands still over the net. A little flat on the pass, but the, the middle's there with a stare down. Look at this. Boom, straight down. Let's zoom in on that stare down here. Look at that. Number seven or four. Number seven. I love it when players... Look across the net, talk some trash. Okay. She's like, sorry. <laughs> a little trash talk's okay. Just don't get carded. Oh, man. Once again, people not attacking the serve and just falling away and hoping that the ball is going to come to them instead of moving to that. And look at John Cooks. He's trying so hard not to throw a chair. You rarely see any expression from John Cook. He's seen everything, but, man, he just looks disappointed <laughs> he's just trying not to blow up i feel the same way good pass jump set okay I'm getting some rhythm i'm starting to root for nebraska they're the underdogs now a little bit late on the middle so giving the middle just enough time but luckily 15 has a fast arm so it's still able to beat the block a little bit that's a good man way to open up that whole court on the angle Okay, Nebraska starting to get some blocking pressure there and some service pressure forming some assets. And I love how this bench is still as in tune with the game, even though they're down two. This is true competitors on both sides. Okay, pass a little off the net. This is what I call a two-point pass where you can mainly run two front row hitters. But we have number six coming in from the back row. Is she blowing her up? No, she could keep it alive. Man, running D-ball attacks from number six. Look at this. Down the line. And great positioning from the libero. Now, this is how you dig a hard-driven ball. The difference between serve-receive and defense. Serve-receive, you want the ball to be passed at waist height and your shoulders forward. But when you're digging, you need to have your shoulders upright so you can drive your hips under the ball so the ball goes up. So great defensive technique here from the libero. Let's watch her again. See how her hips are under the ball, shoulders up. Now a little bit to the left. Good rundown from Nebraska and good hustle. Can Texas convert this? <laughs> What's funny is the hitters don't put away. It's a fast set. Good block from Nebraska and then just a little dink from the setter. <laughs> Wait, the setter get that or the middle? Oh, the opposite just kind of dinks it down. Number five. And now 27 is starting to heat up. Open to the court. Over the middle block, man. Number 27 also jumps pretty high. Oh no, why did the middle from Nebraska stop? So this is where, if I'm a setter, I'd be really upset at my middle. Because the setter is working so hard to contort their body on a tight set. And because the pass is tight, the middle didn't believe that the setter was going to set her. And so she stopped her approach. By the time she realizes that she got set, she's not ready. Then you got to send a free ball over, and then they smash her back at you. See how she kind of pauses and not fully committed. If she just fully committed, she would have had an open net because I think they jumped with the setter here. Let's see what the blockers do. Yeah, double block on the tight set. That means the middle, if she committed, would have had no blockers up. So middles. Always go up no matter what if you think you're going to get set or not. Last one coming in 2017. Texas, the Can she go? Yeah, she just goes straight over. I love watching number six play. 
straight over a clean double block deep corner. That is not going to get dug, not even at the international level. This woman is amazing. Just clean, just clean over the top. Oh, there's still some fight from Nebraska. This is what's impressive about this play is that Nebraska just got clean OT'd and then they come back. So 27, I think that ended up being a better matchup here. 27, who's usually the asset hitter, was having to play in right front because I think they're in rotation one. So this ended up being a good matchup. Boom, you see how she kind of breaks a little bit to pop it up. Wow, great shot, that's amazing. Number 15, we haven't seen her in a while, just that's a crazy sharp cut. To see this type of smart play, she's hitting on the side of the ball and the right front's in the right spot. She's thinking, okay, she's slowing down, probably gonna tip short, but it just ends up cutting on the five foot line. That's doesn't get any better than that placement. Look at this, on the side of the ball, Little cutty, thumb up action. Ooh, stank face from number seven. She's like, woo! Look at that. Mm, that's nasty right there. Okay, over the top swing, but good dig from the middle back 13. Oh, another stare down. Uh oh, are they going to give her another card? She's going to talk to her because if you get a yellow card, you lose a point for your team. And I think if you get. Talked again and you get ejected. Man, look at that whole head above. She's like blocking it with her face and her elbow is not even with her hand. This girl gets up. That is an imposing. Oh, ho, 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 ho. talking that trash. She's in the championship mindset. Five points up. Man, this is why I'm not a huge fan of hip passing. There's a couple ways to teach passing. You can teach leg passing, there is hip drive passing, and there's arm angle and arm follow through passing, which is the one I tend to teach more and I find a little bit more success. And that's what I actually see a lot of the great passers in the world, like Eric Shoji, Justine Wong, a lot of the great liberos, kind of give more direction with their arms. So when your, your hips are always going to be slower, your legs are always going to be slower, but your arms are the fastest thing. I'm not saying you should always swing but you want to guide the ball more assertively with your arms. You're gonna have a lot faster and more precise movements there. If you try to drive with your hips, the ball could rise and it just kind of goes flat. The concept is they're trying to drive the ball up, but the contact point, which is your arms, is gonna be helping you drive it up. You can use your hips to drive for defense because you need a little bit more force behind it, but arm drives are gonna be really important. That's a pretty good pass there. Oh. Man, they are just firing on all ends here. And look at that assistant coach getting fired up. Look at that. Ooh, that guy's getting in the, the championship mindset zone too. This is a great set, by the way. Push all the way to the pin. Good tempo. Making the middle block late. Now the post blocker is on time. And just keep, doesn't do anything fancy. She actually just keeps her right hand forward. Doesn't dive in. Very disciplined block. Both hands are over. Simple moves. Takes away the seam, doesn't do anything fancy, doesn't drop block, just puts your hands over the net. That was an incredible pass right there. Oh, does she make it in? Oh my gosh, we gotta watch that again. Two amazingly athletic plays. First of all, look at that. She is somehow able to pop the ball up perfectly on the setter. Back set. Good block, skimming off the block. One hand of punch. Now this was intentional. Look at the setter here, number one. See how she's not even trying to set it. She's not even trying to bump it back to her team. She's immediately trying to push it to that corner and beats number 27. Now, no, number 27 is not out of position. She's trying to stay. She just got up from a very good serve receive pass and doesn't have time to go all the way back there. And that's a tough one to lose on. But that's just a heads up smart play from Texas setter. Off the block and number one just going, going picnic style volleyball straight to that corner. That's that uncle auntie volleyball. And we got the slide from the middle. I mean, you're just not going to stop Texas at this point. They are on a mission. Beautiful. Elevates, whole chest above the net. You ain't stopping that one. And no stare down after that. She's not going to get ejected in the championship game. <laughs> Swimming on the slide. 
Oh, the ball was up. Okay, they're already celebrating. Do they run her back again? Man, the setter just like, nah, I'm going to get the job done. You can't put the ball away. I'm going to put the ball away. 21-11. Not looking good for Nebraska here. Good dig from the middle when middles can pass. Oh, coming in like a freight train. I cannot stop talking about number six here on a free ball. Single block. Hammering down, getting a kill on the libero. All the checklists in place. Feet set. Second step approach. Boom. Just gets on top of it. Crushes it in that seam. And they try to run their own big, but an up by the middle. And another smart heads up play from Texas. So another great hitter here. Number 13 coming in for the big. But, man, when middles play defense, one-arm stab, knee forward, falling forward, and 13, just knowing that they're scrambling, heads-up play. She doesn't just try to set somebody. She just throws it deep because everyone's crashing in for hitter coverage. And that is such a smart play. I mean, Texas IQ on the volleyball is just supreme. Look at this. Just making Nebraska work super hard. That's got to be so frustrating. And we have championship point. Can Texas close out on just this point? Can they finish? On an ace, of course. On an ace. Well-deserved celebration. Dog pile in the middle. That is crazy. Wow, the tears flow. This is such a special moment. I'm getting goosebumps. Even though it was a 3-0 knockout, I just feel so much happiness for Texas. Well-earned championship. I heard that this match was pretty one-sided, but to see the serving prowess, and people talked about the serving, it was the blocking, and it was the hitting, it was the setting from Texas. And this is no knock against Nebraska, because Nebraska was still a really, really, really good team, and they still are. But man, when you just play just such a great, smart, powerful, technical game like you did with Texas, I mean, there's no stopping that. And I thought Nebraska did a good job trying their best to make some adjustments, running different hitters, but that serve receive, once you take someone out of a good passing rhythm, it's really difficult to set up your offense. So congratulations to Texas for an amazing victory and a long hard fought season. And congratulations to Nebraska for making it to the championship game. Let me know what other games you would like me to react to by pasting that video link below in the comments. And I might just do that video if enough people vote on it.